Why do people have different blood types? Essentially, we have different proteins on the surface of our red blood cells. And there are many different types of proteins that can occur on the surface of blood cells, but the kind we pay attention to when transfusions take place are the antigens that belong to the ABO blood groups and the RH blood group. Let's take a look at the ABO blood groups first. Perhaps you know your blood type, or maybe you don't. People who have blood type A have A antigens on the surface of their red blood cells. People with blood type B have B antigens. People with blood type AB have both types of antigens. And group O people have no antigens on their red blood cells. Now, what's on their red blood cells is only part of what's important. What's also important is the antibodies present. If you have blood type A and you have A antigens on the surface of your red blood cells, you will also have antibodies against blood type B in your blood and we call these anti-B antibodies. People with blood type B will have the B antigens but they'll also have the anti-A antibodies. Anti-A antibodies attack antigen A. So it makes sense that people who have blood type AB and have both antigens on their red blood cells would have no antibodies in their blood. If they did, they'd be attacking their own blood cells. And blood type O, which has no antigens on the surface of the red blood cells, actually has both antibodies present in the plasma. So it's important to note that the red blood cells have the antigens and the antibodies are present in the plasma in which the red blood cells flow. So let's take a look at what happens in different situations. A person with blood type A has antigen A on the surface of the red blood cells and antibody B in their plasma. A person with blood type B, as we said, has the B antigen and the A antibodies. A person with AB has A and B antigens on the red blood cell and no antibodies in the plasma and a person with blood type O has no antigens on the red blood cell and A and B antibodies in the plasma. Let's take a look at what happens in different transfusion situations. If blood is incorrectly transfused, for example, if blood type B is donated to a person who has blood type A, red blood cells with a B antigen will be put into a bloodstream that contains B antibodies and as a result those B antibodies will attack those antigens and the red blood cells will end up clumping with one another. So when we're looking at blood transfusions it's important to look at the recipient blood groups because there's a sea of plasma with antibodies just waiting for the wrong antigen to enter. We also look at the donor antigens to see whether they're compatible. It's true that donor antibodies will attack recipient antigens, but the reactions occur much more quickly between the recipient plasma and the donor antigens. So if blood type A were to donate to blood type A, we should notice complete compatibility and no clumping. However, if blood type A donated to blood type B, the A antibodies would attack the A antigens on the donor red blood cells and we would see clumping. And this is incompatible. If blood type A was to donate to blood type AB which contains no antibodies we should see no clumping and if blood type A was to donate to blood type O which contains both A and B antibodies the A antibodies should attack the A antigens on the donor and we would see clumping. Pause the video now and try and see if you can fill in the rest of the chart. If we look at blood type B, we should notice a pattern like this. We get clumping, shown in red, wherever we have incompatibility. Blood type AB contains both antigens on the red blood cells, so you should see clumping with all of the blood types since they all contain some, at least some antibodies that are going to be incompatible and will attack at least some of the antigens. And you should also see that with blood type O, which contains both antibodies but no antigens, those red blood cells should be compatible with anybody's plasma and there should be no clumping. As a result, blood type O is known as the universal donor, although in general practice, blood transfusions are only done between identical blood groups. Blood type AB, which has no antibodies, is known as the universal recipient and in theory can receive blood from any blood type. 
However, once again, like blood types are usually only donated to like blood types. This is because when transfusions take place, blood cells alone are not transfused. It's whole blood that's transfused, and that includes the antibodies, so it would produce some clumping within the recipient blood. Another important blood group to consider is the RH blood groups. RH factor becomes an important factor during pregnancy. If someone is RH positive, they contain a particular antigen on the surface of their red blood cells. If someone is RH negative, their red blood cells have not got the RH antigen. Now, when people are born under normal circumstances, uh, if they are RH positive, they have no antibodies against the RH uh, antigen. Of course, this makes sense. We wouldn't want them attacking their own blood. And people who are RH negative don't have anti-RH positive antibodies. It actually requires exposure to the RH antigen for antibodies to get made by the immune system in the blood of RH negative individuals. And this generally isn't a factor most of the time, although it is important to take into consideration during transfusions. This becomes a factor during labor. If the mother is RH negative and the fetus is RH positive, the placenta tears away from the uterine wall and some of the fetal blood cells can end up in the mother's bloodstream. When this happens, antibodies against the RH factor are produced in the mother's body and remain there throughout the rest of her life. If a subsequent pregnancy results in another fetus that's RH positive, some of the antibodies from the mother's blood will seep across the placental barrier and into the fetal bloodstream and actually cause the destruction of some red blood cells in the fetus's body, which is really critical since the fetus is growing and developing. This can result in a miscarriage or a blue baby being born. Blue baby is a baby that's severely deprived of oxygen because of the lack of functioning red blood cells due to their destruction by the mother's antibodies. Now it's important to note that usually the mother's and the fetus's blood do not actually mix with one another. The capillaries in the placenta that belong to the mother run very close to the capillaries of the fetus, but blood doesn't generally transfer from one individual to the other. Now, RH negative women who've given birth to RH positive children should receive an RH immunoglobulin injection within 72 hours of giving birth to prevent the mother's body from producing RH antibodies. She'll start producing these antibodies when some of the child's RH positive red blood cells enter her bloodstream, possibly before but particularly at birth. RH antibodies can cause nervous system and heart defects in a fetus. The first RH positive baby is not usually affected, but in subsequent pregnancies, antibodies created at the time of the first birth cross the placenta and begin to destroy the blood cells of the fetus, causing anemia and other complications. So blood types are important both when considering transfusions and also during pregnancy. 